What I'm showing you this morning from God's word is what normal, healthy, mature believers, if all of your systems are operated and God started those systems, this is what we look like. And, and I'll take you through as far as we get this morning. Number one, believers display compassion for believers who differ with their convictions. That's a sign of spiritual health and maturity and, and of being a, a believer who is normal. We don't make everyone line up with whatever our uh, fully come to conclusions are about how we're supposed to operate. We do what we believe is right and we nurture others, but we have compassion. And, and I'll go through that in just a minute. Secondly, mature, normal, healthy believers display the hope that only God can produce by his spirit. They have that. It's from God. It's through the Holy Spirit uses the scriptures because the scriptures are the way we know God. The way we know his character, the way we know his person, the way we know his truth, the doctrine of God. And so we will look at those in the, in the fourth verse there. And then next, thirdly, the third mark of a, a mature, healthy believer is uh, they display a united direction. In other words, they live in unity. Uh, they know the direction the Bible has said and they're united in that direction. In fact, the whole uh, book of Acts shows, uh, there's a key word that, that I will show you in the book of Acts. This united, uh, in fact, you probably have heard the word in the book of Acts. It's called one accord. They display, not this verse says, with, with one mind and one mouth. They don't just believe it. You see it displayed in how they behave. And so we talk about that. And then fourthly, they display a passion for Christ, not self. You see, remember Paul said, I die daily. I am crucified with Christ, but I'm still alive. And, and what that's about is a mature, normal, healthy believer will have a passion for Christ. Everything else, they're not as passionate about. You understand? That, that's why people come to us and they say, you're different. I mean, Paul did a 180. Salvation transforms us so that, you know what the hymn says? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow what? You catch that? Strangely dim. Nothing else, nothing else comes up to the height of our passion for Christ. And, and we'll look at that and explain that. And uh, fifthly, in this passage, uh, mature, healthy, normal believers display a connection to God. Uh, in fact, this is what's so important. I mean, if, if you went down on stadium or whichever way on stadium to, you know, we have a lot of car dealerships all along here. And if you went and looked at a car and, you know, you looked at the sticker and you looked at how shiny it was and you the color of the paint and you opened the door and smelled it and you never bothered to get the keys and, and to actually see if the windows work and the wipers work and if it starts and if there's even a motor under there, wouldn't it be disconcerting to think that you have a car and to pop in there and stick the key in and nothing happens? And you lift the hood and there's no motor. Yet we have a whole group of Christians that that we have never checked to see the reality of whether all these systems work. How about driver's ed? What would you think of someone going to driver's ed and all they did is watched videos of good drivers talking and saying, I love to drive, I love the wind in my face, I love, you know, I love to, to look out all the windows of the car, I love the feel of the seats they move, you know. And you never let them even in a simulator, you never let them drive. Wouldn't that be scary if you gave them a license and a set of keys? Yet that's what we do in Sunday school classes across America. As long as they'll listen to the lecture, we figure they know how to drive. Christ didn't think that was sufficient. He only lectured the crowds. 
the individuals, he pulled them aside and asked them all kinds of questions and interacted with them to make sure they displayed a genuine connection to God as the source of hope through the Spirit. And we'll, we'll see that in verse 13. Sixthly, and this is, this is so neat, healthy believers are filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're full of the Holy Spirit, he produces the fruit of goodness that fills their lives. Did you know you can know this morning if you're truly born again? Because if you're truly born again, God is doing something. It's kind of like um, there, there are people that have broken in when Iraq, you know, after the Gulf War one and two, there were people that broke in and and to the military warehouses and got some of these military gear that was uh, that had a degree of radiation to it at barrels of you know uh, waste and stuff and they dumped it out and took the barrel home and what happened is long term they began to have produced in their lives the fruit of being around radiation. Now that's a negative illustration, but they didn't see it, they couldn't smell it, they didn't, I mean there's no taste to it, but just that presence of radiation slowly caused them to be sickened. Did you know in a positive sense you can't have the very spirit of the infinite God move into your life without him producing a byproduct? And that's called the fruit. And the one that Paul talks about here in verse 14 is goodness. Seventhly, uh, healthy believers experiencing personally the truths of God, which is experiential knowledge. And what I'm going to show here is that it's not enough to know the facts. It's whether or not you have experienced them, whether or not you have tested them, whether or not you have drove, whether or not you have started, whether or not you know how to. We got out of the elders meeting Thursday night. I don't know, it was about 10 o'clock or 9.30. And I looked over on the back we have a driver's ed school going on here in our parking lot 24-7 almost. There were cars out there and cones and there were people directing and they're all from the apartments and they use that as a little driving course and they have the, you know, they're driving around the cones and they're backing up and everything. Can you imagine someone saying they know how to drive but they've never done any of that stuff? You wouldn't loan them your car. Yet, this, this is what the early church did. The early church ran a, a medical surgery clinic where everyone was trained in surgery, not just in the classroom. They actually had to go into the opera, in the OR, and they actually worked alongside of someone else. That's what discipleship was. Do you experience personally the truth of God? Do you have experiential knowledge? Then finally, uh, believers understand and use God's word, and uh, that's in ministering to one another. 